Okay, so yeah, welcome to the to this session on the composition method, session number 10. So the first uh, speaker is Ioannis Augerinos. I hope I can pronounce it correctly. So Ioannis, are you are you here? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Good. So right. Johannes will talk about logic-based Banders decomposition for an intermodal transportation problem. So Johannes, please. All right, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm Johannes from Athens University of Athens uh, of, of Economics and Business in Greece. Uh, and I, I will present you our study entitled The Logic-Based Banders Decomposition for Intermodal Transportation Problem that was conducted with uh, Professor Johannes Murtos and Georgi Zoys. So we'll start this presentation with uh, the description of uh, the problem that motivated this paper, which is a multi-stage intermodal transportation problem provided by a major third-party logistics company in Europe. Uh, then we will describe the formulation of a unified mixed integer linear program, and uh, we propose a valid logic-based vendor composition to solve this problem. After integrating a set of valid inequality relaxations to improve the performance of this algorithm, we will apply our approach on experiments with real data sets. And uh, we will conclude this presentation with the contribution of the study and a few directions for future work. So let's take a look at the three stages of the problem. The disposition stage includes a collection of orders from pickup points. The interregional transport stage includes the shipment of these orders from depots that are located in Central and Eastern Europe to warehouse in Turkey. And the last man delivery stage includes the delivery of these orders from these warehouses to, to the final destination. So we we'll begin with the disposition stage in which a fleet of single trailer trucks must collect orders from pickup points and transfer them to depots that are located in Poland, Czechia, Slovakia, and Hungary. However, before these orders are transferred to the depots, a custom screeners process must be carried out by specific companies. All trucks, trailers, and orders that take part in the routing are dedicated to a single depot, and all tasks must be completed during the operating hours of the companies that are involved. So this setting is actually identified as a vehicle routing problem with time windows. However, given the difficulty of this problem, we cannot integrate it as it is in our formulation. So we opt for a pre-processing step in which we pre-compute the candidate routes to obtain a set covering problem that can be solved more easily. The number of candidate routes is reasonable thanks to the tight capacity of trailers, the strict operating hours of the companies that are involved, and the assumption that each order is, uh, will be served by exactly one depot. So after all orders are unloaded to a depot in Europe, we proceed to the interregional transport stage in which each order is assigned to a trailer of known capacity and this loaded trailer is assigned to a transport mode. Each transport mode uh, is featured with a time of departure, an origin point, which is one out of the four depots in Central and Eastern Europe, a time of arrival, a destination point, which is one out of the three available warehouses in Turkey, a, a cost per use trailer and a fixed cost that will be considered in the objective function. This, <clears throat> this stage is completed when all orders are transferred to any warehouse in Turkey. There is a visualization of the intermodal network. The compact lines are the roadway transportations that are performed by multi-trailer trucks. The dotted lines are the railway transportations and the dashed lines are the seaway transportations that are performed by roll-on roll-off ships. <coughs> As we can see, all the depots are directly connected by roadway with the warehouses in Istanbul and in Isli. However, the trailers that are located in Hungary can be alternatively transferred by railway to Istanbul, and the trailers that are located in Czechia can be transferred by railway to the port of Trieste in Italy, and then uh, by, by sea to Istanbul or machine. So for the last mile delivery states, each warehouse in Turkey is served by a fleet of vans, and each one transfers a single order at a time to its own customer. Since uh, the number of vans in each warehouse in Turkey is limited, this stage is actually a, a scheduled problem and a resource-constrained problem. Uh, in addition, each order is featured with a 
<clears throat> with a predefined deadline uh, and the unique value of importance. So if a delivery is completed after this deadline, then the tardiness cost, uh, which is equal to the square value of the number of days of delayed delivery, multiplied by the importance value of the respective order, must be considered in the objective function. So we construct, you know, so we construct a formulation of a mixed integer linear program that captures the entire delivery process of the, this stage of the problem. Due to time restrictions, I cannot present you the entire annotation of the formulation. So I will try to describe it briefly. The objective function aims to minimize all travel darkness costs subject to the following constraints. Each order must be loaded to a trailer shipped by a mode and unloaded to a warehouse in Turkey. Moreover, the capacities of the trailers must not be violated. And we also consider some precedence constraints to ensure that each stage of the problem will be performed after the previous one is completed. For the last mile delivery stage, the fleet of vans in each warehouse in Turkey must be scheduled so that all orders are delivered to their final destination. So we proceed to the technical part of the paper, which is the logic-based vendor's composition algorithm. Let P be the formulation of uh, the MLP that has just been described. And uh, we consider two groups of variables, group X, which includes all variables that concern the first two stages of the problem, and group Y, which concerns the last mile delivery stage, which is also the last stage of the problem. The objective function of P is equal to the sum of functions F and G, which are linear cost functions uh, of uh, the group of variables X and Y respectively. So problem P is decomposed into the master problem M, which computes the minimum transport costs, and the sub problem S, which computes the minimum tardiness costs, considering the sequence that have been provided by a feasible solution of the master problem. We solve uh, this decomposition uh, with this algorithm. Actually, this is a, this is a brief uh, this is a briefing of the original algorithm. Some notations have to be simplified for the presentation. So initially, we solve the master problem to obtain an initial lower bound, which is denoted by z hat, and it's equal to the objective value of the master problem. We also assume that the initial objective value of this problem is equal to one and denoted by beta. We proceed to a while loop in which as long as z hat is less than the sum of the value of function f and the objective value of the subproblem, then the number of iterations is increased by one. The subproblem is solved again so that its objective value is updated. The, a set of multi cuts is added to the master problem and we solve the master problem again so that uh, we receive the incumbent value of the lower bound. In the end of the algorithm, point convergence is reached uh, then z hat it will be the optimal objective value of problem p. To ensure that this algorithm converges to the optimal solution, we must construct a bounded function b. To define this function, we construct functions b of n for each mode m that are equal to either the tiredness cost of all orders that have been assigned to mode m in the current iteration. If all of these orders were also assigned to the same mode in the right previous iteration, or zero if at least one order that has been assigned to a mode M in the previous iteration is now assigned to a different mode. So the global bound function is equal to the sum of function F and the sum of uh, all functions B of N. We define the following lemma concerning uh, the bounding function. For function B, the following two properties hold. If the solutions of two consecutive iterations are identical, then B will be equal to the sum of the value of function F and the objective value of the subproblem. And for all feasible solutions, this function is a lower bound of the sum of function F and the objective function of the subproblem. There is a detailed proof of validity for, for this lemma in the original paper, which is based on the following two statements. If the current solution is equal to the previous one, that means that all orders are assigned to the same mode again. So it is proved that property one holds. And if the current solution is different than the previous one, that means that uh, there is at least one order that is now assigned to a different mode. So it is proved that the property two holds. 
So we conclude to an adaptation of the theorem that had been originally defined by John Hooker. And we are ensured that the algorithm converges to the optimal objective value of problem P after finitely many steps to integrate the bounding functions into the linear formulation of the mass problem. We construct these linear cuts. We define the continuous variables Z of M that indicate the value of the respective function Z of F of M. And uh, as we can see from the first set of uh, constraints, if all orders are assigned to the same mode, then Z of M will be equal to the darkness cost that has been computed by the subproblem during the current iteration. And if any order is assigned to a different mode, then Z of M will be equal to zero. The continuous variable Z is now the objective function of the master problem. And this uh, the sum of uh, the continuous variables Z of M and function F. To achieve a faster convergence for this algorithm, we consider the following improvements. The first one is a set of redundant capacity constraints that tighten the formulation of the master problem. The second one is a relaxation that helps the master problem to approach the solution of the subproblem. Uh, more particularly, we assume that there are, uh, the number of funds in Turkey is infinite, so all orders will be immediately delivered after being unloaded to Turkey. The objective function of the master problem considers the darkness cost that will be implied by the addition of this relaxation. The third improvement is the construction of a constraint programming formulation for the subproblem, which is equivalent to the MLP formulation that has been already constructed. Because constraint programming methods are generally more effective for scheduling and resource constraint problems. To establish the efficiency of our approach, we run a set of four experiments on 20 real weekly data sets that uh, were provided by the logistics company and date from June to November 2016. The first experiment is the solution of the original MILP. For the second experiment, we saw the decomposition algorithm, but before the addition of the redundant capacity constraints and considering the initial MILP version of this problem. Then we repeat this experiment, but this time we also add the redundant capacity constraints on the master problem. And for the fourth experiment, we replace the MLP formulation of the subproblem with the constraint programming one. A time limit of 30 and 60 minutes is imposed on the original MLP for the first experiment and on the master problem of the decomposition for experiments two, three, and four. To avoid the presentation of the detailed tables of results that are included in the paper, I will present you the most important remarks of them. For the first experiment, the MILP fails to compute feasible solutions for several data sets. And for the rest of them, the optimality gaps that have been computed range from zero, which is actually the optimal solution, to 11.9%. For the second experiment, the decomposition algorithm computes solutions for all data sets. The computed gaps range from zero to 22.1%. The addition of the redundant capacity constraints reduces these optimality gaps so that the maximum gap of the third experiment is equal to 6.6%. That means that the third experiment solves uh, near optimally all given data sets. We notice that the subproblem is solved optimally for all data sets in a few minutes. So given the fact that the time limit is imposed only on the master problem, the gaps of the third experiment and the fourth experiment are expected to be ident identical. Uh, however, we also noticed that the constraint programming version shortens the already quick subproblem optimization. So we believe that this is the most efficient one. To conclude, the contribution of this paper is the construction of a unified mathematical model for an elabor elaborately structured real intermodal transportation problem, and the construction of an effective logic based vendors composition algorithm that can safely compute near optimal solutions for all data sets. We are currently planning on lifting some uh, simplifying assumptions so that uh, we can uh, approach the exact optimal solution of the problem uh, more accurately. And we are looking at some alternative decomposition settings uh, so that uh, we can uh, solve uh, more complex or larger scale data sets for this problem in the future. So thank you very much for attending this talk and we can proceed to the questions part.
Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Ioannis. So, are there any questions from? I don't see questions in chat, but are there questions from uh, uh, from the audience in Vienna? Okay, I see a question from Emil. Hi, uh, thank you for a nice talk. Uh, I was a bit curious about your optimality cuts. Uh, they seem to to give the subproblem objective uh, in uh, in just a single master problem solution. Uh, perhaps you can elaborate a bit on their size and uh, how effective you think they are for the convergence. Uh, actually, uh, they are surely valid. However, they cannot uh, achieve a fast convergence alone. This is why we also use the relaxation. Actually, there are a lot of transport modes that have that are that have similarities. For example, a truck may leave from a depot in, on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, and all of these modes have have identical costs, and they just have different departure time and arrival time. So, if we just leave these uh, optimality cuts, uh, the algorithm will keep uh, choosing all these uh, similar solutions, and the convergence will be slow. This is why we also add the relaxation, and we achieve a fast convergence. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, if there are no other questions, I would also have uh, one. So uh, you mentioned at the beginning that the your objective function uh, is a quadratic function with respect to the tardiness, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So, however, uh, you, you say that the, the overall formulation is a, is still a, a linear program, mixed integer linear program. I guess that this is because of your uh, yeah, kind of set covering a set formulation in which you expand uh, on the possible routes. So the, the quadratic function is pre-computed offline. Is that correct? Actually, actually, we perform a linearization for the tardiness cost, which is actually non-linear. Uh, we define a, an integer variable that is equal to the squared value of days. And on the right uh, on the right hand side of the of that constraint, we compute the regular tardiness, which is the difference of the arrival time and the deadline. We transform the hours into days by dividing by 24. And uh, regularly, we would, would, we would multiply this parameter with itself. However, to, to not ignore uh, possible negative values that should imply a, a zero tardiness, uh, we actually multiply this parameter with its absolute value. So the result is uh, that the integer variable receives the squared value of uh, the days of, deli of uh, delay delivery. Uh, there is an extended uh, description in, in the paper, actually. OK. I will double check the paper then. <laughs> I'm not sure I got the details. Uh, OK, so if there are no further questions, let's ask Ioannis again.